Hello again. I'm continuing on with this new generation of turtles. I'm going to be talking about Yi today with some art playing in the background of me drawing her and I'll be like showing images of things I'm talking about, mostly like pictures straight from the comics. So heads up and disclaimer, if you haven't read The Last Ronin, The Lost Years or the first issue of uh, Re-Evolution, I will be showing images from that. I'm not going to spoil the whole story. I'm just going to be talking about pieces that have Yi in it so I can, you know, relevant to the discussion. I'm not going to be, yeah, spoiling the plot. Um, but if you are sensitive to spoilers, maybe don't watch. Um, I know that the first issue of Re-Evolution hasn't been out that long. So if you haven't got your hands on it yet and you don't want to know anything, um, I'll give you some warning to click away. Anyway, let's get into it. So I've already done a breakdown of Uno and Moja and Odin. So I've got to do Yi now. First of all, she's damn cute. I really love the yellow markings. Um, so again, they're using skin colors, patterns and body shapes to break up these turtles instead of colored masks like the original four. And I really dig it. Um, actually, I'm really, really glad they didn't go with colored masks for these turtles. They were kind of running out of colors. Um, and we don't need color coding to differentiate these turtles in the same way we did with the original four and I really loved yeah like they could have gone with all black masks but they didn't and I think that was a good choice it shows off some of the unique patterns on their faces a lot better like they do cover their face sometimes like a bandana or like a hoodie but it's not like the eye mask with the slits so yeah like I really loved the rainbow we ended up with um, in the beginning of the IDW Team NT Reborn. So that's where like Sophie picked it up. One of the covers has um, Leo, Raph, Mikey, Jenny, Alipex and Lita. Um, and it does like a full rainbow. So we've run out of colours. Um, and we don't need that for these turtles. They've got their own thing going on. Stepping away from the masks part. Um, other design aspects. Uh, Yi is the smallest of the four, but she's still also a, a giant mutant turtle. Um, there's a picture of next to her with her next to April, like to demonstrate the size. And her shell isn't oversized like Uno. It's a much cleaner shape with these really beautiful um, yellow markings leaving from her skin down the shell. And it kind of reminds me of racing stripes. I know they're like hexagonal, but gives me sports car energy. Um, she definitely looks like she's inspired by a box turtle. They've got really like distinctive like black and yellow markings. Um, and I said it before, I think they're mostly like fantasy turtles. They've just drawn what they think looks cool. Um, and I'm not entirely sure who was responsible for the design. I'm not sure if Ben Bishop actually designed them or if it was a team thing because the artwork for most of it was his. So I'm going to assume it was his designs with some input. Anyway, they're basically fantasy turtles. I could say, oh, she's inspired by a box turtle, but not really. It, the yellow and the round shape kind of gives me that impression, but um, none of the others really match up with an existing turtle, and that's fine. Uh, they're mutants anyway. Um, her plastron is also a different shape. Um, the plastron's like the front of the shell. Um, it's broken up into different sections and patterns to the other four. Um, and like, again, this is a good deviation. We've gotten used to the classic six pack effect that the original four had and most versions of the Ninja Turtles have. So giving them different shape language, again, good. Uh, sorry for any other artists who have to remember and relearn new shapes. <laughs> a lot of her shape language is very round, like from the markings on her face um, to her physical build and shell shape, but also the way they dressed her in the baggy pants and the puffy, the puffer jackets, giving a lot of round, no sharp edges on Yi at all. The yellow eye markings also help her read as like cute and round without doing anything weird, like what happened with the next mutation and Venus with her like weird boob plate. I don't like that. They kept the girls like a normal turtle shape like Jenica and I really appreciate that. I'm sure a lot of things I'm going to talk about will need to be revised once we're further into the re-evolution storyline. Uh, I only got the first issue recently and they have a different artist drawing 
most of it. So Ben Bishop did all the scenes with the new turtles in the lost year, but they have, <laughs> I, I went down a little rabbit hole today because I was trying to look at the credits. So I'm going to mispronounce this. Spanish and Australian accents don't mix well together. Esau and Isaac Escorza. I didn't realize they were separate people. They're like brothers and they, uh, I'm not sure how they split the workload, but all of their accounts are shared. And like any time like, someone talks about their art, it's like together. So that's why I was confused. I thought I thought it was someone with like a, a three-part name, but they're brothers. Anyway, so they did um, majority of the pages for the last Ronin re-evolution. Um, and they've stylized a few things differently. And because I'm talking about Yi, I will just talk about what they did with her. Um, I like the way they drew Yi's face markings. Like as it comes around to the back, it kicks up and looks a little bit like a crown. But I suspect this will happen a lot as they continue the story and hire new artists because that's typically how this rolls. There's going to be multiple artists working on one story. Um, because the turtles, these ones, have really complicated designs and I'm sure some things will be smoothed out as they go along or picked up and put down or added to. Um, people are going to draw them differently because they are quite complicated and there's a lot of things to remember on them. I don't know. I just like the way they drew her little face parts. It was cool. Moving on. I'm not going to bring up the last Ronin Revolution again. So don't worry about any spoilers. And I'm just flipping back through the pages now, actually. <laughs> it remem I just remembered how sad it made me. This panel was floating around online for a few weeks as promotion, but the print totally sucked it into the gutter. It cut right through Mojo and Yu's face. Where, um, like as cool as double spreads are, um, there's always some sort of sacrifice on the art and you've got to be careful where you put that stuff. Oh, well, moving on for real now. Um, I, I mentioned this in Moja's video as well, but I do wonder if they're going to lean into Yi and Moja being girls in any way or just play the pronoun game um, because it's been a novelty a few times, some attempts being better than others. I really like how Jenica was handled despite physically looking the same as the four boys and being tough. She still retains some feminine attributes to her personality and her interests and stuff. Um, so yeah, I like the way she was handled, but um, we'll see. It's still a fresh story. It's not like Casey Marie is a beacon of femininity herself. Um, she's quite masculine. Um, and, you know, April is rocking this really short hair style and also is sort of being written in a masculine way at the moment, which is fine. I don't mind. I was just wondering if they're going to use that attribute to these characters at all. I'm going to talk about um, Casey Marie and April in a separate video because I'm really liking what they're doing with April. Another thing, I said it before, but a lot of people have been assigning the new turtles to one of the old turtles and years, most often being called the new Donatello. And yes, I get it. She's showing some interest in gadgets and I think, but... <laughs> I think she's got her own personality separate from good old Donatello, which also depends on which Donatello. Um, I would assume if you want to draw connections, because Kevin Eastman is also writing this, you would compare it to a Mirage Donatello. Um, but I think she's separate. She's really giving like sunshine child. She's eager to please and likes to be helpful. Like, you know, some there's definitely some crossover there, but let's tear away. Let's make them their own characters we don't if you're gonna redo a reboot of the turtles fine cool donatello 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 this character has a different name so hopefully they deviate and let her be her own character more i'm just gonna get into some key moments i liked another small detail that might mean nothing but i like to read into things it's like you know did they give ye asthma um, there's a little scene where she can't stop herself from coughing after having like smoke blown in her face. Um, and it's one of the few moments where all the turtles are being nice to each other, you know, typical siblings standing up to each other when it comes to strangers, but still being like relentlessly mean to each other. So that was kind of cute. Um, outside of Casey and April who have a lot of dialogue, Yi also has a lot of dialogue. She's always asking questions and making observations, so she gets to talk a lot. 
Yi is also the most expressive of the four so far, not just in talking, but her face shows a lot. Like Uno's quite often determined to keep a serious frown plastered on his face and Moja's also a bit grumpy. And a lot of the scenes that were a bit more social, Odin had his face covered. But other than that, he's quite smiley. Um, so yeah, Yi had like the broadest range of like expressions drawn and like things she was showing. Um, just because she had a lot of dialogue and like any time she was in the background, she was doing something with her face. So that was nice to get to see more of her personality that way. So going to do a little prediction like I did with the other four. Um, you know, where are they going to take her character? I'm not as sure with Yi as I was with the other three. They all seemingly had something to work on, but Yi doesn't have an obvious problem to cover at the moment. Naturally, they're going to rely on her for technical support on missions, and maybe there's going to be opportunity for her to learn things like along that vein. But um, the only thing I can think of at the moment that she could work on is like, um, perhaps they'll play on her independence. She's quite confident in her abilities and fits into the team, but her role in the team is still a task she does solo. So we had a small scene where she tried to do something for April when she was younger, unsupervised and cut her hand. You know, she's being independent, but getting into trouble. So they could work on that type of storyline again, teaching Yi lessons about asking for help and relying on others, even though she can do many things on her own. So that's sort of the only like little flaw I could pull out of her. It's not like not as obvious as um like Uno and Odin's, you know, story arc or path or character development could be. So that's what I think they could do for now. Um it's just a prediction. I'm sure the team has plans and we'll just have to wait and see what they're cooking up. Adding this in post recording. These are my favourite pictures of Yi being April's favourite and a little compilation of Yi threatening people with a screwdriver. I love that for her. So um, about the art I drew in this video, um, I just tried to show a few different aspects of her personality and do a few poses and stuff, um, make some little jokes. Um, I used uh, my non-photo blue pencil for the sketching. It's just in my sketchbook, nothing fancy. Um, my favourite pen to use at the moment is a Pentel brush sign pen. Um, and some Copic markers, that's about it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening to me blabber on about these turtles. Um, I'm really excited to get my hands on the next issue because um, I need to stop flipping through these pages I'm terrible for like going through a book over and over again especially like perfect bound ones and the pages fall out so I can't wait to get further into it so I can get my thick stitched book that they do when they collect all the issues that I can't break anyway um I will be doing a Casey and April video after this one stay tuned thank you goodbye